Hey everybody and welcome back to Death Studio. In this video we're going to be looking at general rules of thumb for using depth of field. Before I get started though I want to say a huge thank you to everybody who has subscribed and hit that notification icon that really helps me out and also a huge thank you to my patrons and members your names will be running across the bottom of the screen at the end of the video. So let's jump right into this then. The depth of field is a really useful tool for drawing the focus of the viewer of your image to an area of the screen or a subject in the shot that you want them to. But it is also very, very easy to um, go too far, basically. So what you really want to do, the sort of end goal is to draw the attention of the viewer to a subject or a certain part of the screen without jarring the user's vision too much by that i mean you want to keep it as close to realistic what the eye would see as is humanly possible so as you can see in this scene at the moment i don't have any depth of field set on this camera so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to turn it on so i'm in just camera we we'll go to there go into our parameters tab we're going to hit camera and we're going to turn on depth of field and immediately you can see that the front of this image has now become blurred. We've got bokeh here and this end is in focus. Now for the purposes of this shot we can actually get away with that because really you're drawing the user's attention to the area in the middle ground here where you've got a character sitting there on a sunbed and you've got details going on here. At the front here there isn't a lot of detail going on. But for example if we were to change the focal distance to three meters away that's uh, brought the front foreground into focus and the background is very blurry which is not what we want to do at all we want to keep the users focus on there but to be honest for a wide shot like this I would say that you're probably going to want to bring your f-stop up even higher to somewhere in the 30s just so that the blur at the front here is minimal and the sky is reasonably blurred but again, it's not jarring the vision because if you're looking at things that are far away, everything in your vision tends to be slightly more in focus. So now if we go out of this camera, we're going to go into our perspective view and we're going to locate our character who is lurking by the pool. I'm just going to switch to my camera look and view mode. Here we go. So we can come along here and we can pull in a little bit closer. I'm going to pull into roundabout here where we've got things in the foreground. So we still want to focus on our character, but now this looks really weird because you've got this light source here and you've got these things here that are also in focus. So your attention isn't being drawn to the character. Although you might naturally look that way because she's there and you can see she's there. The image doesn't, it's not a very good image. Apart from ignoring the fact that the composition of this image is not very good because I've just kind of moved roughly to where I want to be. So if we were to add a camera where we are, like that and then we can swing the camera up and around so that we can actually see what we're focusing on and we're going to add depth of field to this camera as well and then we're going to move our focal distance onto the character like so and then if we jump back into that camera now you can see that these items in the foreground are blurred and your attention is kind of drawn away from these things and more onto the character there and if we move our camera around a little bit, we can see, again, we can get a much more natural looking shot. We're focusing on the character now rather than everything else. Everything else that is not equidistant from the lens is more out of focus. So I would call that a healthy amount of depth of field. However, what some people tend to do is they tend to bring the f-stop way down to crazy low. And I've believe me, I've seen enough people do this as a photographer um, just as much as I see people doing in DAS. And as you can see, the focal range now is much, much smaller. So if we go back into camera five now, what you can see is that the camera's face is in focus, but almost everything else, as soon as you get down to a mid chest, we're starting to lose focus. Now the human eye does not see like this. It just doesn't. Um, this is what I would call quite jarring images. You, yeah, your attention is drawn to her face, but the, the the complete lack of realism in the focus around the rest of the image, it kind of spoils it for me. You want to be going 
into the regions as I said in in the previous one you want to be going to higher numbers to make it more realistic now we don't have to go up into the 30s because we're much closer so I would say in the region of like f16 and that's a much much more realistic looking focus for the character so now if we come out of this camera and we go even closer in so we're going for a full, full on kind of just move ourselves around a little bit so that we can focus on the character's face here and as you can see now this looks a little bit weird because again everything is in focus now the, the character is the main thing in the screen which is good that means it's going to draw our attention to her however we can still improve it and we're going to add a camera to where we are now so copy active view perspective and we're going to add depth of field to that camera as well and then we're going to swing around so that we can see what that camera is focusing on as you can see it's actually focused miles away from her at the moment so we're going to bring that focal distance in get roughly into the right place round about there and then when we go into camera six you can see again that's a much much more natural looking shot because the background is slightly blurred anything that's too close to the camera is also slightly blurred and it draws our attention to the character's face if we were to go crazy small with this we were to go to f2 you can see now that just looks ridiculous and unrealistic and i mean i know it's not focused on her face right now but even so the human eye just does not see things that way so you're going to be wanting to go to at least kind of f8 for this kind of shot and again that just makes it look a lot more natural and you could even get away with going up to something like f13 there that again just makes it look a little bit more natural so we're using depth of field to draw focus to the right part of the image without it being weirdly unrealistic and then we're going to labor the point a little bit more i'm actually going to go tighter with this camera so we're going to go to our focal length and we're going to draw it up really close now the, the character isn't actually looking at the camera which is going to make this look a bit odd but we're going to bring her in even perhaps a little bit tighter there so that we're really focused in hard on the face just that a slightly better composition and now we can jump out of there and we can see now you can see how narrow that depth of field range or that focal range is that is really really tight so we're going to open that up a little bit and we're going to just pull that back that it's focusing on her eyes and if we go into that view we should get a slightly more natural shot like that now this is again another one of those rules where we need to be aware of how cameras actually work and there's a lot of science behind this particular topic but the short and the long of it is that the more zoomed in you are the narrower your depth of field or your focal range is going to be so the narrower your aperture needs to be so the greater your f-stop needs to be so if we were to drop this down now to f16 again we're going to get some really really horrible looking bokeh now in some instances this can be quite effective if you were really really tightly cropped in onto her face and you had a really narrow shallow depth of field it can look quite nice but again you want to keep it as close to what the human eye sees as possible so i would say that we're in the 40 range of the f-stops maybe even wider you can see that's getting better but it's still not perfect so you know anything higher than that is going to start bringing it into the much more natural looking vicinity and this is really important because the amount of times that i see images that have overutilized depth of field to the point where the characters blurring or the background is just too blurry and a good rule of thumb and a good way of working this out a good way of looking at this is to look at your finger and hold it close to your face and see how out of focus things are and then move your hand further away as far as the way you can get it and you'll notice that things in the background become more in focus the further away from your face your hand gets and that's a really good way of judging whether or not you've got the right amount of depth of field in an image to achieve the effect that you're trying to achieve 
thanks very much for watching this guys i hope you found that useful let me know what you think in the comments below as always i look forward to hearing those give me a thumbs up if you think i deserve it and until next time take care of yourselves guys bye bye